Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'm at Prickett's Fort State Park outside of Fairmont, West Virginia, and I'm attending the 27th Annual School of the Long Hunter. Well, I am here inside Prickett's Fort for the School of the Long Hunter. A little look inside, and this is my home for this week. Now let's go take a closer look at it. Kind of dark. Fireplace is not usable by me. So I'm cooking outside. And these are the bunks. So I'm going to be crawling into bed tonight. <laughs> well, this is my home for uh, for the weekend. And I've been to the School of the Long Hunter before, but as a participant, this is the first time that I'm here as a presenter. And presenters have the option of living in the fort, which I chose to do. Um, it's the first time I had done it, and it, it definitely has its upsides and its downsides. Um, but you really do get the ambiance of being forted up by being in here. So it, it really shows you how people lived when times were tough on the frontier. You might be wondering, what is the School of the Long Hunter? And it's kind of a unique event. It's, it's really a learning opportunity. It's... Uh, it's an opportunity to both camp in 18th century style and enjoy the camaraderie of your friends. Uh, but it's also seminars, hands-on demonstrations, and it's all about 18th century life and culture uh, on the frontier. So, so this morning, and both mornings, Friday and Saturday morning, we have lectures in the Visitor Center. And my friend Matt Wolf will be doing a first-person impression of Simon Kenton this morning. And then yours truly is going to be giving a uh, presentation on long-range rifle shooting. And then in the afternoon, we'll move outside. And we're going to have a demonstration on splitting and riving boards and making pegs. Uh, all the skills necessary to to build these cabins. And we'll see that right out here on the green. And then we're gonna get another hands-on demonstration on making cordage out of natural materials. Uh, you can pick up bushes on the side of the road, basically, and make string, rope, twine, whatever you need. So it's, it's a mixture of lecture and hands-on. And Saturday will be the same thing. We'll start off with a couple of lectures on 18th century culture, and then we'll move out here for more hands-on uh, hands events. So let's, let's head down to the visitor center where old Mike here will get ready to give his first, uh, first lecture at the School of the Long Hunter. So our kickoff uh, presentation this morning was my friend Matt Wolf, who's a very well-known author and researcher in 18th century ranging, uh, and he has a wide variety of 18th century interests. He did a presentation that was basically a first-person uh, recounting of Simon Kenton's life. And it was very interesting. Uh, Simon Kenton, of course, is someone who should be as famous as Daniel Boone, but kind of isn't. Uh, but he was one of the greatest frontiersmen of the Kentucky and Ohio frontier, and, and Matt did a great job of giving a first-person uh, demonstration on his life. Well, the second presentation of the day was yours truly, uh, and the subject was long-range flintlock rifle shooting. Now, because of a, uh, a 21st century problem, <laughs> I, uh, I had to do that presentation in true 18th century style. Uh, so I, I did not have um, my PowerPoint presentation available to show because of some computer incompatibilities. Uh, however, 
I, I think it went pretty well, but there were a couple of things that I could not do. And that was I couldn't show a couple of video clips that I had planned to show. So I promised that I would put them in this video. So anyone who attended the School of the Long Hunter uh, could get to see what they were supposed to see during my class. So let me, let me run those clips. So during the presentation, I explained the difference between shooting matches in the 18th century and the way we run shooting matches today. And this clip was just a, uh, a short illustration of modern flintlock shooting matches. So most modern shooting matches uh, are what I call short-range precision shooting matches. Uh, typically, you're shooting at ranges of 25 or 50 yards at either small paper targets or small steel or novelty targets. And uh, that requires very precise shooting. But it's not the way things were shot in the 18th century. Whether it was precision shooting, like in this case, I've just shot a miniature marshmallow off a stick, and now I'm going to shoot the stick in half, or long-range shooting, which we'll see, which we'll see in a minute. American riflemen were the best in the world. And the second clip I was going to show is actual long-range flintlock rifle shooting, uh, just to demonstrate that it certainly could have been done in the 18th century, and it can still be done in the 21st century. And um, seeing is believing. And now we'll show you Ed Zoransky taking his shot on target. Got it! Yeah. This is Scott Isley taking his shot at it. I heard, I heard it. Yeah, I heard a ding. And he smacked it for a beautiful okay, shot. There you go. Where's James? One. Aimed at one o'clock. I aimed at eleven o'clock. You hit right okay. where I did. You're at uh, one o'clock on the circle, right on the edge. He got set that shot. Hit with somebody else's gun. So after a little break to get some lunch and relax, we went into the afternoon sessions. And the first of those uh, was presented by Alan Krauss and Robert Brookover. And it was on riving boards and making pegs, taking your cabin to the next level. And this was a hands-on demonstration of how boards were split in the 18th century and used to make shelving or shingles or virtually anything else you needed flooring uh, so it was all hands-on and it was it was pretty interesting and the weather made it even more interesting because for most of the afternoon's demonstrations it was snowing and sometimes it was snowing really hard and then other times just uh, just lightly but it snowed pretty much all afternoon and we were all in our heavy woolen, woolen coats by the time it was done and grabbing gloves and hats and everything else we needed to try to stay warm. <laughs> well, I didn't expect to fall in love at this event, but I'm afraid it happened. I fell head over heels for Katie. Katie is a beautiful pointing griffon, and uh, I'm in love. But unfortunately, Katie has already spoken for uh, by Alan Krauss 
and she obviously loves him with all her heart. So I'm just out in the cold, but Katie was a lot of fun to be with, a beautiful girl. So I don't have a real big crayon, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is more meant to be kind of a hands-on. Here's how you do it. Grab a piece. Let me give it a shot. Uh, let me see how it's done. But we're going to talk about making cordage. So I'm talking about just twisting uh, various materials. I've got three different materials here that we'll work with uh, to make string, cord, uh, rope, whatever. Um, so that was Dwayne Schreckengost. And uh, his presentation on making cordage out of natural material like deer sinew or actually bushes and reeds that grow on the side of the trail uh, was really fascinating. I mean, it, you can make some very effective string and rope and cord that way uh, pretty quickly. And it's definitely a skill that would come in handy on the frontier because you're not likely to be carrying you know, a barrel full of rope with you. Uh, and uh, I actually I learned a lot during this presentation. Uh, the cordage class was held in the Fort's Gun Shop, which is one of the um, the two main public buildings in the fort. And during the School of the Long Hunter, the gun shop is set up to be a sutler's area where you can actually buy uh, 18th century craft things. Uh, but also it had big tables available and it was a good place to do the class particularly since most of the time a snowstorm was raging outside and believe me being inside the gun shop was much appreciated because besides putting a roof over your head it had a nice big cozy fireplace so you could actually get a little bit of heat going <laughs> and believe me it was cold that day well it's not all schoolhouse at the uh, school of the long hunter there's plenty of socializing, too, and every Friday um, during each school of the Long Hunter is the Fort Feast. So let's take a look at that. Well, the Fort Feast is a, uh, a staple of the School of the Long Hunter. It's a potluck. It's held here in the meeting house, and desserts are over here in the gun shop. So let's go take a look at it. All right, so here we are in the meeting house. This is lit by candles and whatever daylight manages to filter in through the doors. And we've got the Fort Feast, which most everybody has eaten, so it's pretty well, pretty well destroyed. But this was the savory side of the house. And let's go over to the gun shop and take a look at the dessert table. All right, so here we are in the gun shop. It's uh, not well lit for video, but this is the dessert table, which has been pretty well rated already. I think uh, I think this has been a successful feast. You want the best jackrabbit in the world? Saturday morning, it was back to the schoolhouse for a couple of more present presentations, and the first one was by Kenton Styers, and it was on brewing beer in the 18th century, and <laughs> it was actually fascinating. Uh, I learned a few things I didn't know, and Kenton brought samples of his own. 18th century style home brews, uh, and they were quite tasty, I have to say. So I guess beer isn't just for breakfast anymore, but that's how we start our day off on Saturday. The uh, second presentation was by Nathan Kilbuck, and Nathan is a well-known uh, blogger and uh, now a magazine author. He just had an article in Muzzleloader, and he is an extremely thorough researcher and he's dedicated to 18th century uh, history uh, I mean, he's just a, a wealth of knowledge on that score and his class was called beyond squirrel cookers and it was a look at what sort of equipment long hunters took with them when they went off into the wilderness to make their long hunts and as he likes to point out being a long hunter was not a lifestyle it was a job and it was a hard job. And uh, he presents us with the tools and equipment that those men had to do their job. And uh, he had a number of uh, relics and actual antiques with him that uh, we could examine. And it was, it was just a fascinating, uh, fascinating talk. Now, in the afternoon, we started off with a round-robin trading session. 
And this is really an opportunity to test your ability to lie uh, and, and to deal in short practices uh, because the object is to make whatever you're trading seem as desirable as possible by giving it the most interesting backstory that you can and then seeing how much you can get for it. So it was, it was actually pretty entertaining. But I've got to say that Alex... Uh, from the Frontier Trading Company, was a surprisingly sharp trader for a young fellow. And uh, he made some pretty good deals during the round robin. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Alex later on. But suffice it to say, Alex, Alex was a shark. And the final presentation of uh, the 2022 School of the Long Honor was given by Justin Minert. And it was on fording up. Uh, how people use these forts that we're staying in during the uh, times, you know, when there were Indians about, when uh, when they were likely to be attacked, and and it was quite interesting, uh, as as was every discussion there. But you know, basically, a place like Prickett's Fort was not a home; it was a place of refuge. Uh, to think of it like a town is to think of it wrong. To, uh, that would be like thinking about about Boonesboro. But Prickett's Fort was different. It was built to give people in the surrounding countryside, like three to five miles away at the most, a place of refuge when the alarms were being sounded because there was a war party in the area. Uh, and it was very, very interesting look at those tough times. Well, we're getting ready to start the charity auction here at School of the Long Hunter. Everybody, not everybody, but most people have donated items to be auctioned off. Uh, the proceeds all go to support Prickett's Fort State Park. So everybody is looking over what they want to purchase. And pretty soon the bidding will start. And this is just a quick look at some of the items that were donated uh, by the attendees for the auction. There's some pretty neat stuff here. Two guys that you're going to see up front conducting the auction are Greg Bray, who is to the left, and Greg is the director of Prickett's Fort State Park and uh, a reenactor and also a colonial era blacksmith, uh, quite a talented guy. And to the right is Bill Snyder. And he is the volunteer coordinator for this. So between the two of them and with the addition of Bill's lovely bride, Heather, uh, who does an incredible amount of work on this, uh, they managed to pull this event off every year. So we'll start off with this wonderful... Not pay until we're all done at the end. Okay? And you'll pay in an orderly fashion. Or else. Or else. Yes, sir. Do you take rubles? No. So my contribution to the auction was a little primitive cleaning kit that I put together, gun cleaning kit you can keep in your bag. So let's see how it does. We have this wonderful primitive gun cleaning kit donated by Mike. Okay? And it's got a it's got toe, it's got screw driver, a couple flints, and really nice toe worm in it. All in one of these uh, tech cash. What caliber? Um, doesn't say. Any manly caliber. Yeah, we're talking manly. You could get it at a 45, but it'll do everything serviceable 50 up. Because it's how you wrap the toe around it. Ah! Who'd like to start bidding out a 20? The 20 to 20? I got 20. The 25? The 30. I got 25. Anybody for 30? The 30 to 30? I got 30. The 35? Bid 40. That's why I got 35 over here. Bid 40, bid 40, bid 40, bid 40. Anybody in for 40? I got 35. Anybody for 40, bid 40? What? Okay, 40. Bid 45? Bid 50. I got 45, any man for 50, but 50, but 50, but 50, but 50? 
Sold for $45. Number 20. So after the auction, the last event on Saturday is Tavern Night. And uh, we all go to the, uh, the meeting house and basically set up a little fort tavern with some hors d'oeuvres and it's bring your own bottle and everybody just enjoys themselves. And uh, it's, it's really a great time. And it really gives you the ambiance of what socializing would have been like in an 18th century fort. I mean, it's all candlelit. With a big fire at one end, everyone is dressed in 18th century fashion. And you can just kind of feel the history in the room. And it's a great way to end the School of the Long Hunter. Uh, because Sunday morning, uh, there's the church service, and then we're all out of there. So this was essentially the end of the show. Now, before I close out the video, I'd just like to mention that, um, of course... I met a lot of old friends there again, had fun with them, and made some new friends. And I met a, uh, a fellow YouTube host, and that's always a treat. And his name is Alex from the Frontier Trading Company. That's his channel name, the Frontier Trading Company. And he does all sorts of uh, in-depth 18th century videos, and, and they're quite good. And I, I really, I can't recommend them uh, enough if you're into 18th century lifestyle and culture and material culture well go check out his channel because he has some good stuff well another school of the long hunter is in the books and it's memorable for a few reasons it had about the worst weather you can possibly have in april with almost hurricane force winds and snow uh, but we had a lot of fun we had some great learning experiences and that's what this place is all about. But to be honest with you, what makes any event are the people you meet and the dogs you pet. And there were a great bunch of people and a real sweet dog at this event. And I certainly had a phenomenal time. And I can't wait to go back next year. And next year, I'll be uh, giving a presentation on smoothbore shooting. So if you can come, by all means, sign up for the School of the Long Hunter. And I will see you there.